Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back to Celebrating Act 2. Today, John Coleman and I are with the great John Mariani, our virtual gourmet. John Mariani. Good morning. All right now, bios. All right, everybody pay attention. It's, <laughs> it's Irish Brogue Day. Sometimes we have talk like a pirate day. Today is Irish Brogue Day. Now, John, boy, with a name like Mariani, I wouldn't expect that your first choice of travel would have been the old sod. But it's true. It's You've been writing cool. about it. You've gone to Dublin. You've gone to Ireland. You had a great time walking the fine old city. Tell us about it, bye. Well, first of all, may I remind you, Mr. Corman, that St. Patrick was a Roman saint, an oh, Italian. Don't bring that up again. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody does that. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, anyway, Ireland is uh, back from the what we all got out of was COVID and the 2008 recession. Uh, as you recall, the Celtic Tiger uh, of the 90s um, made Ireland in, into one of the real boom economies of the era and well into the 21st century um, until they, like everybody else, got hit by the recession and by COVID. So they have been, uh, they meaning the tourist industry, has been really suffering for the last two years um, because for up until I think late February, early March, you couldn't even visit the whole country. It was clamped down. And uh, even now, if you are an American, at least, and you go, um, you have to, before coming back, uh, you have to be tested for COVID, which is not a big deal unless you have COVID. Uh, so you have to stay in Ireland for another six to nine days, which doesn't sound so awful. No, but somebody's got to pay for it. A hotel room. And since I was traveling with a mutual friend of ours, uh, John, uh, Walter Bagley, to spend nine days in a hotel room with Walter Bagley, one of us would have killed the other uh, <laughs> with a broken bottle of Irish whiskey after we finished the bottle. So, um, so yeah, I mean, that, that's something to consider. Also, the idiot pharmacy, whom my pharmacist I went to, he said, well, here's your results. You're all negative. And let me just fill this out here, this form with the universal product code on it and give me your, your passport. And he fills it out. Then take it to the airport, put it into the machine. Woo, woo, woo. Not you. You're not getting on this plane. <clears throat> the reason being, uh, he put down my birth date as August 27, 2022. So I'm still not born yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Will not exist for another three to four months, and um, this took some doing at the airport to prove that I was a, a human being standing in front of them with a passport that looked like me. Um, finally, I was able to get on the plane, but uh, bully, oh bully. Yeah. So the details really count. Uh, yeah, and, and you know it hangs over your head. Frankly, I was there for a week, eight days. It was hanging over my head the last day. Will I have it? Because I had a chest cold. So, um, and I tested myself. I had the, the Q-tips, um, and I was okay. But you got to get tested, and uh, the thought was hanging over my head. So ultimately, you want to get back to the United States, but you sure don't want to be prevented from getting back to the United States. So it is a consideration. Yeah, but now, getting back to Ireland. Place? Yeah, getting back to Ireland. So uh, why Ireland today? Well, I chose Ireland for the very good reason that I'm about to tell uh, your listeners, your viewers, um, is that it's probably the best alternative, especially if you're on the East Coast. It's very close. I mean, it's only a little over six hours by plane <clears throat> um, rather than eight or ten or going to Hawaii or whatever. Um, so it's it's close. Um, the airfares at the moment are not too bad. Unless you want to fly business class, it costs six thousand bucks, which is ridiculous. Um, and uh, the Irish are very receptive; they're dying to have you back. Um, the hotels are at good rates. The dollar is almost at parity. When I was there, I think it was a dollar eight. Now it's down a dollar two, dollar three uh, for the euro. Um, everybody speaks a form of English. Uh, Except, you know, the taxi, cab, taxi drivers in America speak 
languages from countries you've never even heard of. In Ireland, they they do have these brogues, and depending upon what class they are in or what neighborhood they come from, uh, you can uh, either understand them or not understand them. So you get in the cab, you say, take me to St. Stephen's. He's, where's it? Where's it? We'll go to St. Stephen's. You know, it's it's not Gaelic. It's a form of Irish English. But they are very wonderful people. They are great raconteurs. And it, you know, that's the thing. You get into a, a taxi, and you can have a real conversation with the taxi driver who is witty and uh, tells you things that you need to know about getting around. So, And just about everybody, from concierges, who are very happy to see you at the hotel, to the lovely Irish bartenders, male and female, who pour your Guinness with such expertise. Um, it's a terrific place. And now I went to Dublin, where I've been many times, and I went to Galway, where I've never been. And I'll be telling you about each of those uh, cities and in, in other segments. Um, but re remember that Ireland is separated into two quite distinct countries, territories. And up until very, very recently, uh, they were almost at war with each other over British occupation and so forth. So you have to make that distinction. Um, uh, however, um, Belfast is a wonderful city now. They're still having their troubles. And if you saw the movie Belfast, which took place with Kevin Brano's uh, Belfast in the 1970s, I suppose, when he was growing up there, um, it had its troubles. Or you could watch Dairy Girls, which is a wonderful comedy series um, about these uh, Catholic high school girls in uh, in um, Kerry. Um, so they are two distinct countries, and the one we as Irish Americans know is far more uh, based in the South, the Republic of Ireland. Um, there are more Irish in America, more, more, more Irish in New York than there are in Dublin, and fewer Irish in Dublin than there were in uh, the 1840s, when, this, when the Irish potato famine hit, uh, 1845, which killed millions just by virtue of starvation. And hundreds of thousands got out and went to America or Australia. Um, and one of the things I visited there was a, a place, uh, a, a boat as a replica of one of the sailing ships called the Jenny Johnston, which used to bring people from uh, Ireland to the Americas. And uh, it's not much of a boat, it's small, and they packed them in below ships, five to a bunk, wow. and never really allowed much on deck. But this particular boat, the Johnny Johnston was famous, Jenny Johnston was famous because it had a really good captain and owner who even had a doctor check everybody out and a doctor on board. And he never lost a single passenger. The others, they would be dying of all sorts of diseases and sure. uh, while they were on board. And, and, you know, we're talking about weeks and weeks, on uh, three, four weeks. And if you're going to if you were going to Australia, imagine getting on one of these boats for four or five months yeah. down below ships. And uh, they weren't exactly stopping along the way to pick up uh, terrific provisions. Um, so it was a rough hard time and they have an entire magnificent museum in Dublin right adjacent, adjacent to the uh, Jenny Johnston called the Emigration with an E museum. It's state of the art it's as good as uh, like our uh, um, African American museum in uh, in DC. Uh, all these new museums have lighting and videos and oral histories and um, this is a beautiful and remarkable museum. You could, if you are Irish, you could trace yourself back to uh, families there. They have um, ancestry uh, resources. Um, they have walls full of people who were uh, Irish Americans who um, emigrated, uh, including people like Errol Flynn and, and many, many others. Um, of course, Bono is, is Irish, a lot of great entertainers. Uh, it's a great, great museum. Uh, you cannot miss it. And it didn't exist as of a year or so ago. It wasn't even open because of, because of COVID. So um, it's uh, highly to be recommended. So for all those reasons, um, they love Americans. They speak English. The, um, the Euro is at parity. Um, it is a beautiful land if you get outside of Dublin. Um, it is very beautiful. The trains run on time, which is really sweet. 
Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's, you can, if you are Irish American, you can certainly try, uh, uh, check out your heritage. You can go up to see where they filmed The Quiet Man uh, in Inverness. Um, you can tour the places that James Joyce uh, lived, and you could take a James Joyce tour of Dublin uh, and, uh, that he details in, uh, in Ulysses. Um, the curious thing about uh, the Irish literateurs, poets, and, um, and writers, James Joyce, Padraic Pierce, um, uh, Jonathan, not so much Jonathan Swift, the 18th century, Oscar Wilde, uh, Brendan Behan, they all got out. I mean, back then, we're talking about the turn of the last century, it was not a place that you wanted to be. It was poor, and it was dominated overwhelmingly, as we, Coleman and I, can testify to the Irish Christian brothers who raised us and gave us our education. It was totally dominated by the Catholic Church, uh, very strict. Um, I visited one of the last remaining shuttered, closed, Magdalen Laundries, um, which was a, pl a place, there were dozens of them throughout the country, where wayward women, prostitutes, 15-year-old girls who got pregnant, got raped, um, girls who were flirtatious would be put in by their uh, mothers and fathers, and sometimes spend the rest of their lives doing laundry for the parishes. And they were only closed down in the mid-90s. And the one that remains, which up on McDermott Street, is being turned into a uh, museum, a uh, museum of shame, basically. But it's now, the great thing is that the Irish could admit that this type of thing went on. Yeah, and, good for um, them. They can have a museum custom to it. There was a, a wonderful movie uh, starring Pierce Brosnan, and I, I can't remember, it's been quite a while, um, but it wasn't, uh, I don't think it was about the Magdalene Laundry itself. It was about how the Catholic Church took its children away or something. I, mm. I wish I could remember more about it. But yeah. the church was a major influence and not always for good. No, well, John, a... that's a, a wonderful uh, recommendation for travel because people are getting out and traveling now. Yes. And it's still part of the European Union. This is the first time you've been back since Brexit, right? Um, yes. So... Um, uh, quite if you had to go to uh, 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 Belfast, which I don't think you, you said you did not do on this trip, uh, you would have need to go through a checkpoint then, right? It's no longer an open border. Oh, it is an open border. Oh, it oh, still yeah. is I an mean, open border. They, they talk about themselves as one. It's, it's kind of like the north and south of the United States, um, a bit more legalistically separated although increasingly in the United States, uh, North and South, um, are two different countries as far as I can see at this point. You know. John, thank you so much for your recommendation and the stories about Dublin. More to come. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.